What's up, YouTube? Hey, I am um, back working on this little project of mine. Uh, if you saw our previous video, I kind of introduced this project. Uh, this is an 05 Jeep Wrangler TJ. Uh, this is the long wheelbase, so technically it's an LJ. Um, doing a little work on this to try and uh, fix it up a little bit. This is my daily driver these days, so uh, if you saw the previous video, the grill was all bent up. Took that apart. Took this chrome facade off. Straightened it up. Got uh, back in here and straightened up the actual grill. Um, the bumper like that on there. To be honest, what I did is I got a little ratchet strap in here and hooked in here a couple of different places and went across and back and forth here three or four times. Spent about an hour and just pulled the whole thing out. And uh, if you overdo it a little bit, that's okay. It's easy enough to push it back. I can use a dead blow hammer or some sort of soft face hammer so you don't beat it all up and scratch all the paint off. Um, but it turned out pretty good. Still got some little dents in the fenders, but hey, we uh, are making progress. But that's not the pro project for today. Uh, the project for today is that one of the things that I wanted to do, um, make this thing a little nicer, um, begin to bring it back around and make it serviceable again for a long time, is just to replace these nasty rusty door handles and uh, wasn't sure if I was going to replace those or if I'd remove them, sandblast them clean, paint them and then put them back in. But lo and behold, I found on Amazon that for the tidy sum of $23 shipped to my house, I could get two brand new door handles. Now, of course, these are not Mopar. If you're a Mopar guy, you're not going to like this video because I didn't use Mopar parts. But I um, guarantee that the Mopar ones are not available for less than $12 a piece. So I went ahead and got them. Um, I already did the driver's side. Let's see, that's the one that was on there. This is the one for the passenger side. Uh, they're basically the same from side to side. The only difference is which way the action works. Um, but I um, already got the one put on the driver's side here. Kind of see how that turned out looks nice got a nice finish on there i don't know how long it'll last but um for 23 dollars and a little bit of time we're going to give it a shot so i figured i would jump in here and make a real quick video on what that process is like um, not using any real specialty tools really the only specialty tools i'm using are i've got a set of these cheap amazon um, trim removal tools. I like to use these because they are they flex a little bit. They don't let me get too carried away. They don't break the, the plastic trim. Don't scratch up the finishes quite so much. And I've got this pair of 45 degree long reach um, needle nose pliers. And I'll explain in a minute what that's for. Uh, in addition to that, um, it's not a bad idea to have on hand a few of these little trim buttons. Again, these also came from Amazon. They were super cheap. I think I paid 10 or $20 or something two or three years ago for a bag of 50 or 100 of those. And I'm still working my way through them. It looks like that may be a lifetime supply for me. But um, yeah, I'll see there's, there's the rest of that bag. Um, but anyway, what's involved with this? Uh, first of all, you got to get the door skin off of the inside uh, in order to do that. You remove five Torx screws. Now, there are two here that go through the handle. There's one here that's near the strike for the latch. There's one below the map pocket and another below the map pocket. You remove those five and then the door skin pulls straight out. And those buttons will keep it fastened. And you're probably going to do that and break some buttons. Um, there's one or two that I think I was able to salvage, um, but for the most part they're easy to replace. Um, looks like there's six buttons, six buttons on the back of this skin. Um, so again, this is backwards. This is the latch side. This side that we're looking at here, this will be the hinge side. Goes like this on the door. There's one, two. There's one down at the corner there. There are two 
the outside corner and one above the strike. And what I've found is the best way to get those out is to um, get in there with your little trim tool and I just kind of slide along here until I get close to one and then I twist the tool and just pull straight out on them. Um, you may have better luck salvaging yours. It's kind of chilly here today. Uh, it's kind of cold out here, so that plastic is a little more brittle than it normally would be. Um, that takes a little bit of a toll on those. Uh, the other thing you have to do is remove the window crank. This one's got good old manual windows. Um, this little E-clip is what retains the crank. And the way that that goes is this is a little trim ring, right? This goes up against the panel. And then the E-clip and the crank go on over top of it. And this E-clip sits in these little slots on the crank. Can you see those? There's one. And there's one. And I don't know if I can do this with one hand, but it um, sits in here this way. Let's see if I can get it single-handedly. Yeah, probably not. Um, that snaps on. It sits kind of like in that position in the crank there. I just reached in behind here and pushed them out. I've got this little pocket screwdriver that I bent on the end. Man, I use this thing all the time. This is probably the screwdriver that I use the most. Um, you can kind of see it's just got a little bit of a curve there in the end. I use this for taking electrical connectors loose, popping the little lock tabs loose. I use it for reaching in behind places like this where access is tight. Access is tight here and you're going to have a hard time getting to it with a straight screwdriver. But with this I was able to reach in and just get against the end of this clip and push it out. So worked really well. Um, watch for that thing. It may go flying and um, you may have to go retrieve it. Especially if your shop looks anything like my mess here. So keep an eye out for that. Um, to put this back on... Like I said, if I could pop this back on here one, with one hand, it just kind of hangs out right there. And all you have to do is just push that onto the shaft. You don't have to put the clip back in afterwards if the clip is on the crank. There's a little bit of a bevel on the end of the shaft there. And that's enough to spread that clip apart and allow it to slip over the splines and then just lock into that tab. So that makes uh, putting it back together pretty simple. Um, there is a plastic sheet in here that's kind of a vapor barrier, and I, I suppose the thought is that that's some soundproofing, too. It's kind of laughable to me to think of soundproofing on a ragtop Jeep, but I suppose that's why they put that in there. I guess if you had uh, hard top on here, maybe that would count for something. Um, so it's got this heavy, like, tar adhesive on it. Um, I was able to kind of peel that loose and to gain some access. Now, this is the fun part. Everything that you're going to do to replace that latch is done through this hole. And uh, access is tight. Um, I've got kind of thin wrists. I've got decent sized hands, but my wrists are kind of thin. That kind of helps. Um, you're going to be doing this kind of blind and um, without a ton of access. So there's a couple of things that I did. One, this is the rod that comes over from the, lat the lock button on the latch. Um, you can go ahead and pop that loose. And to do that, you kind of hinge this purple part down. Let me get my little screwdriver here. Let's see if I can show you. So this piece just kind of rotates down. This is easier to do with two hands. There, see? Spin that down and that unlocks it. And then you can just push this out. Okay? So doing that allows you to move this guy around a little bit and push it to the outside of the door which just gives you better access through here to work um, i don't know if you have to do that but it sure seemed helpful to me uh, to do it that way to remove the latch itself it is retained by a couple of wedges and i don't know that you're going to be able to see those let me see if i can get the light in here just right so that you can see them. Focus camera, come on. Get you in the door here. 
See that wedge there with those teeth on it? There is one of those on either side of the door latch, and that is what retains the door latch in the door. That wedge just kind of pushes down behind a, a tang on the back side of the latch and holds it in the door. I apologize if I'm making you seasick here, but I want you to understand this. Um, so I'll show you the back side of the latch. You got this little clip in here. It's kind of an anti-rattle clip. And that wedge slides down in here. It's about this long. And it slides down in there and just kind of tightens this up against the door. And that is the, the trickiest part of putting this thing together, is getting that wedge back into place. Um, to pop those out, I just got against the end of them with a long screwdriver and gave them a push. Push them up towards the top of the door, up this way. And they just popped loose. And then I was able to kind of reach in there with my fingers and kind of fiddle them loose. Um, if you kind of push them up as far as you can and then twist them one way, you can kind of work them out from underneath that latch, work them away from the back side of that latch bucket and get them out. Um, aside from that, the actual lock mechanism is a rod that comes up and has a hole in it that fits over this peg. So there's a little spring washer in, in the back that keeps some tension on that so it doesn't rattle. And there's a cotter pin on the front here, like a hair clip, that you can pop loose. Again, I, I reached in with a screwdriver, was able to kind of turn it to the side, and then I got in underneath of it and just pushed it, and it came right up out of the hole there. So, like I said, a little bit fiddly, a little bit uh, tedious. You know, there's the back side of the old one. A little bit rusty, a little bit worn. Uh, this one, coincidentally, was a little bit hard to open before. It was like it almost didn't have enough throw, and I imagine that's because of some of the wear in these parts. Um, so when I put it back together, I was able to adjust that a little bit. And I'll show you what I can do to adjust that. Um, if yours is kind of where, you know, it doesn't release right away and it doesn't release and then you really pull on it and it finally goes, um, what you can do to kind of adjust that is right here. This is just a spring clip. And if you get in behind here with a screwdriver, this rod just pops out pops out that direction and you can adjust it up and down pulling this down all the way is what releases the door latch so if you're seeing some wear in your latch system you're having a hard time getting the door to unlatch you can pop this out maybe pull this rod down one or two threads on that rod and snap it back together that allows you some adjustment to make sure that you don't have a hard time getting in and out of that, that door latch. Um, just makes it a little bit easier. Makes it work a little nicer. So I think that's about it. Um, like I said, those wedges are the most difficult part. There's not really room to work from the top here um, because you've got the glass in the way. I don't know, I suppose you could probably take the whole door apart and get the glass out and it would be a heck of a lot easier to work from the top here. But um, I was able to do it without taking the glass out. I was able to pop those, those wedges loose. Um, once you've got those out, this whole thing just slides out of the door. Uh, it really is pretty simple. And then the new one slides in. Put the wedges back in. Reattach the rod. Start sealing things up. So it's not a terrible job. Like I said, be a little bit patient. Uh, if you're um, getting frustrated, just walk away from it. Take a breather, do something else for a little while, and um, come back to it. It doesn't doesn't pay to get overly frustrated and, and be rushed and uh, get aggravated and break something. So not a bad job. Uh, it just takes basic hand tools. Um, like I said, I think I've gone over everything else that I've used. I've got this long slotted screwdriver that I've used for years. Um, that kind of is what I use to pop some of that stuff loose, get that hairpin off of the latch, pop the wedges out. Um, the only thing that I used, uh, I showed you those needle nose for, 
was when I put this back together, I used that to reach up inside here and put that hairpin back into the latch. I did that on the driver's side. On this passenger side, I want to try and see if I can do that through the hole from the outside of the door here before I put the thing back together. I think there's a chance that that rod will flex over here far enough that I can actually put that together and then slip everything in. I won't have to mess with that. Um, save me just a little bit of time. So um, we'll try that. I don't know for sure that that'll work. Uh, you may try it as well. Maybe you'll have better luck with it than I do. Um, but that's about all there is to it. Um, I tell you, that's it's one of the things that I kind of appreciate about these Jeeps is they're pretty simple. Um, you know, it's kind of a utilitarian vehicle. There's not a whole lot to them, uh, especially with this age and model. Um, you know, it's not a whole lot of bells and whistles. So it uh, it's something that you can work on. It's something that you can play with. And uh, even if you don't have a whole lot of mechanical experience, it's something that you can learn on. Uh, they're, they're not terrible to work on. So that's it for now. I'm going to go ahead and try and get that uh, passenger side wrapped up. And then I think I'm going to call it a night. It's getting cool out here. It's going to be frigid cold this weekend uh, down into the single digits Fahrenheit with wind chills at about 20 below. So I'm uh, not sure I'm going to spend much time out here working on that stuff this weekend. Um, but I uh, figured I'd bring you in here and show you what we were up to. So thanks sincerely for watching the channel. Um, if you like this comment or like this uh, video, um, please click subscribe and uh, you know comment down below if you've got uh, some feedback or tell us what your experience is. Um, we've got a few other little projects we want to do to this Jeep and uh, probably be some more videos forthcoming. So thanks for watching.